Welcome back. Well, class action lawsuits are pitched as the little guy standing up to big corporations. Think about Erin Brokovich, of course, one of the more famous cases. The government here, the federal government in Australia, is concerned that there's an increasing way of funding these actions, though, that means that those people, the little guys, if you like, are losing out. It's via litigation funding. Joining me now for a debate on this is Stuart Clark AM. He's an adjunct professor at Macquarie University and also representing the US Chamber of Commerce here in Australia. And Ben Hardwick, head of class actions for Slater and Gordon, of course, that launch uh, many class actions. Gentlemen, thanks both for your time today. Uh, I'll just start with you, Stuart Clark. So you're representing the US Chamber of Commerce. There is a concern here from uh, US corporations that they could be in increasingly sued as a result. Mm -hmm. Just to get up front from each of you, your, your representations, uh, where you're you're sitting on this side of the debate? Yeah, certainly. Well, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be with you. Just to correct one thing, uh, I don't represent the US Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I am a lawyer who has a number of clients in this space. And one of those clients, and has been for about 14 years, is the Institute for Legal Reform. And yes, over the number of inquiries, uh, and including in this one, I have uh, assisted it in providing advice in relation to some submissions. Uh, I've also made mm. submissions on my own right, and uh, as you rightly pointed out, I have an academic interest in the, in the subject. So, uh, and indeed, yesterday I gave evidence uh, to the inquiry, though that was in my private capacity and in, in relation to my private submission on the need for and the basis for regulating the industry. Right, there you go. So I'm glad I got that uh, clarification. Ben Hardwick, okay. uh, your firm obviously participates in these um, litigation funded class actions. So this is something that obviously is a, a, an interest for Slater and Gordon in a financial sense. Well, this is the fourth uh, government inquiry into class actions over the last six years, Tom. So we're getting uh, quite familiar with this. I, I think the, the business lobby has been running an active scare campaign against class actions, particularly over the last six months. And so this parliamentary inquiry for us is concerning because the first three inquiries yeah, I'll, I'll came to the conclusion. I'm just trying to clear up the two roles. Your firm obviously runs these class actions. They can be litigation funded, and that obviously is a financial interest for your firm. I'm just trying to clarify the two sides of the fence here. Of course, yes. So, so we run cases that are funded by litigation funders, and we also run class actions on a no-win, no-fee basis. All right. Yeah. Now, you will get your say. We're going to delve right into the issues now. I just wanted to clarify where we're sitting on this. So uh, you first, Stuart. Uh, this, I'm going to give you one example, the NAB class action. So 45,000 people have benefited from a, a payout because of junk insurance they had, basically meaningly insurance. Many didn't even know they were going to get a payout. So this is a win for them that wouldn't have happened without this litigation funded class action. Is that accurate? Look, I, absolutely, and, and let me make it clear from the outset, as, as I have throughout this debate, I'm in favour of class actions. Mm. I've been an advocate for class actions since they were introduced in 1992, and I believe litigation funding has a role to play in uh, providing access to justice. There is no dispute in relation to that. Uh, what our concerns, what my concern is, and when I say our, the broad range of people have a concern, is that this industry is utterly unregulated. It is the only part of the legal, oh, I'm sorry, the financial services industry which is unregulated. And all we are asking for is a, the same level of regulation or a similar level of regulation to that which applies in, uh, in respect of mortgage brokers, financial advisors or anybody else in the financial services industry. Mm. And we need to address the outrageous returns that are being taken out of the pockets of class members. So yes, the, the, the NAB uh, customers will have made a recovery, but if it was a litigation funded uh, matter, and I don't know whether it was or not, if it was litigation funded, um, a, huge, uh, a huge amount of money would have been taken by the funder and by the lawyers. And on Thursday, uh, Justice Murphy in the Federal Court of Australia approved a, a class action um, uh, commission arrangement where the return on the investment was 502%, 502%. Now, if you think the most expensive mm. consumer credit you or I could get at the moment, leading side of maybe a payday loan, is about 22% on a, on a MasterCard, 502% uh, is just outrageous. And it's coming out of the pockets right. of the class members. Can I also just I'm add one get more into point? The contingency um, fees in, in, yeah, relation to, uh, in relation to Slater and Gordon's position, and that is this. What, uh, what he hasn't added is that they're also uh, advocating in this inquiry the right to take a contingency fee, that is to take a percentage of the commission, uh, I'm sorry, the percentage of the compensation that their clients receive in any class action uh, so that they too will be able to reap extraordinary benefits out of the, the victims of these wrongdoings. So on to those contingency fees. We're talking about uh, them, uh, Ben, 
not being paid by time, but just a cut of the proceeds. How is that good for the victims in any given class action? Uh, thanks for the question, Tom. If, if you wouldn't mind, I just wanted to correct the record. The case that we talked about there was the NAB class action. That was the Slatter and Gordon class action. And we were very proud to be sending out checks to over 45,000 Australians last week. This was the first class action following the Banking Royal Commission. Uh, and, and it was a great, a great day for everyday Australians who, um, who saw the Banking Royal Commission and heard much uh, concern about the way banks have treated their customers in Australia over the last decade. And through that case, mm. we were able to deliver justice to those clients. And, I, and just to correct the record as well, 96% of the settlement proceeds in that class action ended up in the pockets of ordinary Australians, people who are unemployed, people with disabilities. And I think that really speaks to the value that class actions deliver to Australian society. Uh, look, on the further question of contingency that, that, fees... Further to that on contingency fees, because they end up in a very different situation compared to 96%, don't they? Isn't that the issue? How would it be a good result for those people who are affected by any given thing to no longer get 96% but something a lot reduced? Well, I mean, I, I think, yeah, just, well, there's a few questions there. So the question about contingency fees is this. Up until very, very recently, contingency fees have been prohibited in Australia. So when you hear stories about lawyers taking 30 or 40 per cent of cut of the proceeds, up until very recently, that actually wasn't permitted in Australia. And so what's taken place over the last three decades, last, last two decades, is that litigation funding has come in to take the place of contingency fees. And litigation funding actually was incepted in Australia in 2001 and adopted by the High Court in 2006. And so as a consequence of that, uh, litigation funding has become an important part of the legal landscape. And so litigation funding is a service which is used not just by class action lawyers, but it's also used by corporations. Um, it's a way in which people entering into the field of litigation can defray the risk. Because if you commence a piece of litigation, whether it's a class action or any kind of litigation, you're on the hook for the other side's cost. And that's a very big undertaking. And so uh, for, for, the, for the little guy who's in a David and Goliath battle, it's very important that they have the capital, someone standing behind them to indemnify them against adverse cost, to provide mm. the resources, the financial resources, to take on the big end of town. Right, and but so you can get indemnity insurance for a hell of a lot less than the cut on any given case, can you not? Well, I mean, litigation, um, adverse cost insurance is one part of the litigation landscape. Obviously, you still need to pay for the barristers, you still need to pay for the experts. Mm. Uh, if you want to take on a large bank or a mining company, uh, and you want to take on the big end of town, you're going to need resources because you bet your bottom dollar that the bank that you're suing is going to get the best lawyers in town and they're going to have the best resources available. And so the, the job of the class action lawyer such as myself is to get the best resources that we can, level the playing field, so that we can do our best to deliver justice to our clients. All right. Stuart, I noticed that ben, to that? Well, I noticed that Ben has very carefully avoided answering the question. I'm assuming that this case, if there was 96% return, was on a no-win, no-fee basis, and I believe that is the way a class action should be run, and I congratulate the firm on doing it, if that's what they did. What he carefully avoided telling you was that in the, uh, the last um, a couple of inquiries where Slater and Gordon and their colleagues have been advocating for... Uh, contingency fees, they ask for uh, up to 20% of the take. So rather than get 96% of the, um, the compensation in the case he's just been so proudly talking about, they would have taken up to 20% mm. of that. Up to 20%. Uh, it is simply outrageous. It turns lawyers into the same, or puts lawyers in the same position as mortgage brokers or real estate agents, and we are not that. We have a duty to act for the, in the interests of justice and to place the interests of our clients ahead of our own. And repeatedly, the courts, the Law Council of Australia, the New South Wales Bar Association, the majority of the legal profession, the Australian government has said introducing contingency fees, arrangements for lawyers, will create an insurmountable conflicts of interest. Now, I can understand Slater and Gordon is just another public corporation. Uh, after they went bust in the UK and their UK adventure, they're owned by private equity. Actually, I think owned predominantly by US private equity. Mm. I accept that. They're there to make a profit for their shareholders, the private equity interests that own them now. But that's not the legal profession. That's not what I signed up for, and it's not what the majority of Australian lawyers All signed right. up for. All right. We're nearly out of time, but Ben, private equity, the point is to make money. I mean, how can you justify uncapped contingency fees? That, that can't benefit victims, can it? 
Well, I mean, the, the problem with Stuart's response is that he doesn't actually get into the detail. Um, the, the way in which the legislation has been drafted is that the court has over, overarching determination about what the percentage cap is in a contingency fee case in Victoria. So ultimately, no cases have been brought under the contingency fee, fee regime, and it's only a matter of time. We'll see one of those cases but brought, and, and we'll have a clearer argument. idea. And the Victorian, when, when, an, when an amendment was moved to place a cap on it, to guarantee a return to, uh, to the uh, class members, the Victorian Labor Party majority in the upper house uh, voted against it. They voted for an unlimited cap. It is outrageous and it's not in the best interests of consumers. Ben, I'll let you respond to that when we're nearly out of time. Well, I think over the last two and a half decades, we have seen $3 billion transferred from large corporations to everyday Australians. And I, and I can't hear from Stuart any, any sort of sensible response to the underlying value that class actions do bring to Australian society. How they're funded is a complex mix. And it's very easy to criticise the way in which class actions are funded. Um, but you, you can bet your bottom dollar that every Australian that, you're, that you speak to who's participated in the class action will speak very highly of the value that they got because, frankly, without that class action regime, they would not have had access to the justice system. Well, that's not the case of those We've that have gone to there. court to oppose, the, uh, to po oppose some of the outrageous percentages. I'm in favour of class actions. All I'm right. in favour of funding. All I want is sensible limits. We've got to leave it there. We're right out of time. But Stuart Clark and Ben Hardwick will see where the inquiry goes and where the government goes on this as well. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Pleasure. Thanks very much, Tom.